Hello everybody, so today is going to be a quick, a little, well, quick, am I ever quick? I feel like I'm really bad at doing short videos, but we're going to try for it, and we are going to be doing a review on the Kat Von D Saint and Sinner palette. I know it's a little late to be doing a review on this palette. I have had it for a while now, and just finally been able to kind of start playing around with it. I did go online and kind of google search to see if you could still buy it. I was able to find that JC Penney's Sephora is still selling it, so I will do my best to put that link down below. I didn't find it on the Sephora webpage, um, but you can still get it. And plus two, I also feel like even if I don't want to buy the palette, I like to watch review tutorials a lot, or not even review tutorials, but just reviews in general to help to feed my makeup obsessed brain. So anyways, um, regardless, for whatever reason you are here, thank you, and let's go ahead and dive into this beautiful palette. So I went ahead and I threw away the, like, the unicarton that it comes in, essentially. It comes in, like, a black unicarton that has this image on it for the American edition. I think they did a separate, uh, graphics for the European edition that looked really cool. And it opens up like this. It has kind of a circle tab that you can grab and open up like so. And essentially it's emulating a church and then stained glass on the inside, which I thought was quite pretty. You have two sides of the way that palette is split up. So you have this as the saint side, which kind of has more of your demure colors, for lack of a better word. And then you've got the sinner side over here, which has a bit more of your pops of color, I guess. They're not like crazy rebel colors, but um, a bit more vivacious in the color selection. Come on, autofocus, come on. And then the what I like is that the name for all the shadows is on the back. You do get a mirror. I think these mirrors are kind of silly because the way that you would have to hold the palette to use these mirrors would be really difficult to hold. That being said, though, the quality of the mirrors that are in this palette is really, really, really nice. Um, they're nice and long, so you can see your whole eye shape. It's just, it's kind of a heavier palette, so to use the mirrors that are in it would actually be, to be honest, it would be a little tiring, which bums me out because the mirror in it is actually really, really nice. Um, I like the fact that the colors are named, which is great, and then on the back, as uh, she does this with all of her palettes, you have all of the names of the eyeshadows on the back as well. And it is Kat Von D, and it does have the vegan heart on it. So this one actually is, all of her stuff is cruelty-free, but this one is vegan as well as cruelty-free. So kudos to her on that. I know that's been a big goal to have her whole company go vegan. I don't think it's there yet, but I know it's it's where she's wanting to move it. And so to kind of break everything down, you get a wide range of mattes as well as metallics and kind of some shimmers with glitter in them and you have two toppers so the colors up at the top right here it was nice Kat Von D did a video herself where they did swatches and she talked about all the colors kind of explaining them these two colors right here absolution and rapture they are more toppers so they're really pretty and they do have pigment to them but they really are more like a glitter topper that need a base if you want them to have kind of a punch of color to them and then we have got Worship, which is this purple color right here, and Immaculate, and they are kind of like a sheen finish, I would say. They're not super metallic. Sabbath is the black of the palette. Out of all the blacks in her palettes, this one, it depends on what you want for a black for how much you like it or won't like it. It's not the blackest of black that I have ever encountered, especially like with her formulas, but it's a very buildable black, and this black is perfect for intensifying the colors in a look. It's really good for building up and darkening a look. I think if, if you played around with eyeshadow, I think that will make sense where, you know how sometimes you'll put down a lid color and then you'll look at the work you did in like the outer V right here and you're like, it needs to be darker to like blend in to the colors you've put on your lid. This is the kind of black that is really, really good for that. And then we have Ashes, which is kind of one of my favorite colors. It's this gorgeous taupey brown that has like a blue-green sparkle in it. 
Then we have chalice. I'll do swatches of all of these. It's just easier for me to go through and, and talk about them really quickly. We have chalice right here, which is kind of a pretty, I feel like this color is in a bunch of palettes. It's your basic kind of sheeny taupe color. We have sacred heart, which is a nice kind of, kind of burnt peachy terracotta. Then we have amen, which is a great color uh, for lighter skin tones to set your eyeshadow base. Martyr, which is a very interesting, this is kind of the only transition color out of the whole palette. And even then, it's only going to be a great transition color depending on the look that you're going for because it has a very interesting tone to it. It's warm, kind of, with kind of an orange slant to it. And then next to it, Devil, which is one of my favorite colors in the palette. It's a very pretty kind of burnt orange terracotta. Then we have Revelation next to that, which is a pretty darker brown that has, as you can see in the pan, lots of gold glitter in it. Sanctuary, this to me is another color that you see in a variety of palettes, but is still a very pretty shimmery dark brown that has more purple pull to it. Heaven, which is what I have in my inner corner right now, and it's a gorgeous silver. When you put it on the eye, I think as you can see in my inner corner, it gives a very nice sheen, but it's not, um, depending on how much you build it up, and it's not going to be, bam, silver. You can build it up to get that, but it won't instantly go there. Um, Crucifix is just a really nice, dark, dark, deep, neutral brown. Then we have, getting into more of the fun colors, we have Vestiment. Uh, this color I feel like is really popular. You're seeing it in a bunch of palettes nowadays. It's kind of that teal color. Then Ministry, just a very nice cobalt blue. This one reminds me a lot of the color that is in the uh, metal and matte palette that she came out with. We have Exodus, which I think is super fun. It is a kind of bright green that has a really pretty gold shimmer in it. It is what is on my eyeballs right now. Then we have Cathedral, which is a very gorgeous, I love this color as well. This one is more glitter-based, as you can kind of see from looking at it. Um, some are more glitter-based, some are more sheen-based, and some are more metallic. And this Cathedral has a very pretty, it's like a purple cobalt, no, not cobalt, sorry. It's like a purple um, chrome look. Then we have Rosary, which is just a pretty, you know, red burgundy color. I feel like you see this one, it's not a hard color to find. Then Baptism, which is a very pretty light baby pink. This makes a very beautiful brow bone highlight if you have more fair skin. Exorcism, which is just a really nice deep purple. Relic is this gorgeous gold color that almost has a slight green undertone to it. And then we have Stigmata, which is this last color right here, which is a pretty red that has pulls a bit more orange. Um, you know how some reds can have more blue and like a blue pull to it, and some can have a bit more of an orangey kind of warm pull, yellow pull to them. This one has a bit more of an orangey pull to it. So I will say I really like Kat Von D eyeshadows quite a bit, so I think that these perform Form very well. I think she has some of the best metallics as far as how they perform dry versus wet. Um, hers do apply really nicely even when they are dry. As with all things though, applying it with your finger or, you know, spritzing it with some Fix Plus or whatever, you know, liquid you want to spritz it with is going to give it more of a pop um that just is the nature of how these guys work now one thing that i did hear a lot of people complaining about was the layout of the colors and at first when i see it like i get that it's not necessarily going to be like match this color with the color right next to it but to be honest i think that is a good thing because what she's doing is you're looking when you look at this palette it makes you look at every single color individually which i think sometimes is really easy to forget to do and when you're doing that, it kind of will push you a little bit out of your creativity. Like, for example, for the look I have on right now, I was like, I really like this green color, but what do I think would match well with it? And I was like, ooh, well, green, and then this color devil, but then I really want to use this color. So I think if you let yourself have fun with it and go into that creative part of your brain, you're going to have a lot of fun with it. Don't, don't look at an eyeshadow palette and just be like, I'm uninspired, you're not laid out in an ABC fashion for me. Um, don't do not do that because you'll, you'll cheat yourself out of some nice palettes. But so uh, the layout to me is not an issue. The formulas are great. The mattes I think are very blendable. The black is the only one that's not my favorite. I wish it was a little bit more black um, as opposed to just kind of a 
it's great for darkening colors. I like a good solid black eyeshadow. Um, she could have put more transition colors into it, but then you wouldn't have as many fun colors to play around. So that is probably, if you're looking for like a con, the biggest con I would say about this palette is that it is a palette to create a variety of fun looks with, and you can most definitely only use this palette to do looks. But if you want to do like a super detailed 10 eyeshadow, put five colors in the crease, then you'll need to dip into another palette. I don't think those looks are necessary all the time. Um, but for a lot of basic looks, you can either take one of these colors and kind of blend it all throughout the lid and crease and it will buff out quite nicely because these do blend well. But if you want to have more of your kind of standard traditional uh, crease shades and transition shades, then you will need to dip into another palette. I have a crap ton of palettes, so that's not a con for me personally, um, but that may be a con for you if you don't have a lot of palettes. Um, so it's not necessarily the best travel palette, depending on what you want to travel with, but formula is great and I like the color selection quite a bit. Now, as far as the pricing, this guy is $62. $62 is a lot of money. I feel like this is probably the most expensive palette that I've purchased from her. The other ones, I'm trying to think, the other ones were probably around 40 between the 30s and 50s. So 62 is kind of a bitter pill for me to swallow with this, especially for how long I let it sit on my shelf. That was my bad. I should have used it earlier because I do think you can do a lot of great things with the palette. So that, as with everything, price is always going to be subjective for if you think it is worth it or not. Um, they are great shadows. You do get a lot of shadows. You get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, You get 24 shadows. So, I mean, you know that. That's just going to be a subjective thing. I do think that they work really well. You can do a lot of looks with them. Some of the colors, they're either in other Kat Von D palettes or you can find in other palettes because some of them in particular, like Vestiment, this color right here, it's pretty and the formula is great, but you see this color in essentially like every other palette that is out there right now. It's like the go-to pop of color for 2017, but... So I do think this palette is worth it. I do think it is really fun if you want something to kind of create and play around with makeup. But if you're someone who realistically you know that you're not going to be doing more colorful, not even colorful, but a bit more like edgy pushing play around with makeups, then I think your money would be better spent on like the shade and light palette. Um, so it's just kind of a personal preference as makeup is in general. Um, I personally really like it though. I think it is great. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get on into the swatches. And yeah.
Okay, thank you so much for watching those were the swatches i hope that you liked this tutorial if you did please give me a thumbs up you know you know what to do right down there helps me out in the short term long run all of the above and i really appreciate it it's nice to get your feedback as well and if you really really liked it please hit that subscribe button i would love to see you in the next video i hope that you are having a good day night evening wherever you are and mwah! Goodbye. Oh, and I almost forgot. If uh, you are interested in a tutorial on this makeup look that you see right here that I have been sporting on this, on this um, fine video, then I will have the link that will happen five seconds as I disappear off the screen right now. But uh, yeah, goodbye guys.